Steph, thank you. We are now two weeks into the province's stay-at-home order, and we're going to be finding out whether or not our numbers are heading in the right direction. The head of the province's science advisory table was, will be laying out the latest projections this afternoon. At last update, we were warned that the rising cases were threatening to overwhelm the health care system. But the province's chief medical officer of health has said this latest lockdown has reduced daily cases. There were some 1,670 new cases yesterday and 49 deaths. All right, seeing a bit of hopeful news here in the fight against COVID. Starting today, long-term care residents in Toronto will begin receiving their second doses of the Moderna vaccine. The first round of shots were completed January the 15th. And this comes as retired General Rick Hillier, who is chair of Ontario's Vaccine Distribution Task Force, and Premier Ford touring a vaccination site in Newmarket yesterday, capable of giving out 1,000 doses per day. The province is expecting to receive around 26,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine next week, but that is down 80% from what was originally promised. And so it just makes our rollout of the vaccination program that much slower. We're still going to concentrate on getting to those that we absolutely want to get to and finish off all the residents in the long-term care homes, the high-risk retirement homes. We want to get needles number two in the arms of people who need them. We've extended the time frame to allow that to occur, but it just makes it slower having less vaccines. Hillier says any more disruptions to the supply chain will have a drastic effect on Canada's vaccine rollout plans. Meantime, health officials in Simcoe, Muskoka are demanding more testing of positive cases <clears throat> excuse me, to track the COVID-19 variant that is quickly spreading throughout the community. Multiple residents at the Barry Long-Term Care Home, Roberta Place, have tested positive for the highly contagious variant first detected in the UK. 49 people have died, with more than 200 infected. Families and health experts are also demanding answers and will be holding an online town hall and protest this afternoon at 2.30, calling for more accountability from the Ford government. Well, Toronto is putting an end to non-residents who are being allowed to book skating time at any of the city's 54 outdoor rinks. We had a number of uh, complaints uh, from people who were having some trouble making a reservation and they felt it was unfair that people from living outside the city of Toronto should uh, have the opportunity to make those skating reservations. It was only, I think, just under 3% of the total reservations that were made. All right, so this ban is going to kick in on Wednesday. Skating time on city rinks, yes, in high demand ever since the lockdown began with a lot of families looking for anything to do outdoors and to do safely. Some 735,000 online bookings have been made since these rinks opened up. The city made an exception to the stay-at-home rule for outdoor exercise. All right, so lots to discuss here. Mayor John Tory will be joining us. Uh, talking about that, but of course the city's ongoing fight with COVID-19 and a little bit of optimism here as we look ahead to what a gradual reopening may look like. So he's going to be joining me at 7.05 in an hour's time. Starting today, Air Transat flights out of Toronto, they are suspended. The revised winter schedule will be in effect until April the 30th. The airline also suspending some routes from Montreal over the same period. Transat AT, that's the company that runs Air Transat, says pandemic border restrictions have caused a decline in bookings. Customers with flights booked will get a full refund and passengers already at their destinations will be rebooked on other flights coming back home to Canada. And as expected, a report on the workplace environment at Rideau Hall was described as disrespectful and condescending under Julie Payette's watch. The government yesterday releasing an independent report detailing allegations by ex-workers under the former governor general. 92 current and former employees were interviewed. They described instances of yelling, screaming, aggressive conduct, demeaning comments and public humiliation. Payette resigned exactly a week ago ahead of the report's release. She has admitted to no specific wrongdoing. Well, the current mental health crisis is being called the second pandemic caused by COVID-19. And experts are warning that for children, this damage could be long lasting. So coming up here in a few minutes at 6.15, why young people need support now more than ever and what we can do to help. We have a psychotherapist joining us coming up. And yes, we're talking about this, the GameStop phenomena, how investors from Reddit outplayed Wall Street heavyweights, costing them hundreds of millions 
of dollars. If you are still confused as to what's going on, Mike Apple, he's going to break it all down for you next.